emotions I'm sorry When I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Sorry when I forgot that you're enough.
beautiful name. Sixty-six years ago, in 1956, Cecil B. DeMille released his epic movie, The Ten Commandments. It had a budget of about $13 million. Think about that, back in 1956, $13 million. But it grossed over $65 million as it went through all the theaters worldwide. Of course, it starred Charlton Heston, and he was Moses. It was pronounced and promoted as the greatest epic of all. And it certainly was an epic. It was over three hours, three hours and 40 minutes to watch the Ten Commandments. And of course, this was a movie all about the life of who we're going to talk about today that comes from that Hall of Fame in Hebrews chapter 11. It was all about Moses. Moses being born, Moses leading the children of Israel, out of Egypt and the slavery that they were in. And one of the things that we will discover when we look at Moses' life today is that Moses, in it, during his entire life, it was a journey of faith that he had in his God, who he learned and found out about in the burning bush, but then he trusted in his life. And in doing so, he faced many challenges. And those challenges that he faced are the things that drew him close to God because his life was not smooth, it was not simple. And you know, as we begin this message, our lives are similar to that. And as we see these different uh, moments that we're going to see in Moses' life today, one of the more, most important lessons we can learn as followers of Jesus is how to have faith in God and to trust in him during those times in our life when it may get difficult because we're gonna walk through both of the circumstances, the times where everything seems to be going well, and then we're gonna walk through those difficult times, those times of challenges in our life. And as we do that, we need to learn to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And we'll see that as we see Moses' life. I wanna show you a real simple illustration right now, a diagram. I didn't create this diagram, I didn't do the artwork. But when I saw this years ago, I saved it because I thought this says so much about how we need to approach our walk with God and our lives living for him. In this diagram, you can see that the first, the top part talks about our plan. And, and boy, isn't that the way we look at things when we think about our lives? This is exactly how we would like it to go. There you are on a bike. And the end is, is at, at the end of that nice, smooth, easy line that goes up. And wouldn't that be beautiful if life was like that? But the bottom one kind of gives us more of the truth. And this is how God works in our lives. And this is how God allows our lives to live. It's God's plan. And as you can see, the person's on the bike, but what's ahead isn't a smooth, easy line to take them from point A to point B and into eternity. Boy, there's all sorts of challenges. If you look at that design on the bottom, God's plan, it shows the person on the bike, but what is ahead? Boy, there's a, a valley with rocks in it, and you can see after that it has to climb a hill and gets to the top of that hill, and the next thing you know, there's this difficult footbridge to go across, and then you gotta go up the hill a little further, and then down into what looks like maybe some rough waters that you're gonna have to go across, and then up a cliff, and then down a valley, and then, then there's rain, you see that cloud on there, and then, of course, the steep hill that will have to be climbed. And, and life is like that. It's got its ups, its downs, its difficulties. And you can see that for each one of us, as we go through our lives, this is what our life will have within it. No one escapes the times of difficulty. No one escapes the times that challenges arise in our life. And we're going to see this in Moses' life now. 
We're going to see in his life that he was a biblical hero. And his greatness lied not in his, just in his abilities, but it lied in his faith and his steadfast obedience to God as he walked through all those difficulties. Now last week, Dave Easton taught us about Joseph and the life that Joseph lived. And it ended with just a beautiful scenario. If you were to read through all of Joseph's life, you would see that at the end, there they are, and it's a happy moment. There's reconciliation, there's, there's forgiveness with his family, and they're all together, they're all happy. They're just one big happy family, and all went well. But now comes the time of Moses' life, and things have changed. Years have passed. And it tells us in Exodus chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, listen to what it tells us about the circumstance. It tells us that now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation, you know the, the happy moment there, it says they all had died. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. So here it is, still in Egypt, the land was filled with all these Israelites who have multiplied. But the challenge and the problem becomes there was a new king in town, Pharaoh, a new Pharaoh. And he was in power, and the Bible tells us that he didn't know Moses. He didn't like these Israelites. He didn't have anything to do with Joseph. And that Joseph's family meant nothing to him. And he then, seeing this large group of Israelites that have now lived in his country, he became filled with fear over the number of Israelites that were there. So he decided to do something about it, and Pharaoh made slaves of them and oppressed them. And in oppressing them, he still was filled with fear. So what he did is he said in order for them to quit growing as quickly as they were, he commanded that all the male babies in Egypt that were born immediately would be killed. And that became the edict that he passed. And in doing so, God decided he was going to intervene. And that's where Moses steps in. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. This is the chapter we've been looking at with all these heroes of faith that, that are shown from the beginning to the end of that chapter. And in Hebrews chapter 11, Today we're going to briefly look at now the verses that talk about Moses. In fact, I'm going to see, show five different by faith statements about Moses and his life circumstances throughout Hebrews 11. By faith, by faith, by faith. We've seen all these different characters. And today we're going to see by faith the decisions and the actions that Moses made that we can learn from as we see these today. And the truth is, there were so many moments in Moses' life that, that he only, the author of Hebrews, could only come up really with the five he wanted to put in this chapter because there's so many other ones. But we will now just look at the ones that he has described. And the first one is verse 23 of Hebrews chapter 11, in which we see by faith, even before Moses was born, his parents, when he was born, hid him. Listen to, what, listen to what verse 23 tells us. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Now with each one of these by faith statements that we're going to see, I'm going to share the challenge that, that was being posted and, and, and dealt with by the people. So by faith, Moses' parents hid him, and the problem was, the challenge was, the edict that Pharaoh had just made to kill all the newborn baby boy, boys as soon as they were born. And so it tells us that Moses' parents, by faith, hid him. They had to make a diff difficult decision when he was born. As soon as they knew that they had a boy, they had to decide, are we going to follow Pharaoh's decree, or will we refuse to do that? And they decided not to obey the king. And what they decided to do was they hid Moses. And they hid him for months after he was born. For three months, the word of God tells us that he was hid. And see, there's two things that, that prompted this decision we see in this passage. The first was that Moses' parents saw that Moses was no ordinary 
child. Something inside of them recognized that Moses wasn't just a normal child, but there was something special and that God had a purpose in his life. Somehow, that was instilled in their hearts. So that was the first thing that prompted their decision to hide him. But the second, even more importantly, was this. They were not afraid of the king's edict, it tells us. See, Moses' parents believed and they feared. They believed and they feared. First, they believed so strongly in God's existence, in God's greatness, and in God's power that they said, we will obey God. And God would not want us to kill our own child. And the second thing is, not only did they believe so strongly in God, but they feared God. They feared him more than they feared the king. So by faith, they realized that they couldn't couldn't do what the, 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 the king had said had to be done. They decided to hide him. And realizing that it was impossible then to keep their baby indefinitely hidden, they had to come up with a plan. First, they hid him. But I love what they did afterwards. By faith. It tells us in Exodus chapter 2, verse 3, but when Moses, or when she, Moses' mother they're talking about, could hide him no longer, they'd been hiding him, she got a, a papyrus basket for him, coated it with tar and pitch, and then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds on the bank of the Nile River. So, can't hide them any longer, and in faith they decided, we got to do something. God, we're going to trust you. So they trusted God, that God would watch after him, and they, they put him in the Nile River. Just imagine how difficult these decisions were with this challenge that they faced, with all of this looming over their heads, but by faith they trusted God. And the beautiful part of this story was then through God's providence, uh, it ended up being that Pharaoh's only, her, his own daughter found Moses, saw him, had compassion on him, and then she decided to keep him. And what I love about this story, and we're not going to be able to go into all the details today just because of time and so much that happened in the book of Exodus, but she unwittingly then hired someone to nurse him, and it had ended up being Moses' own mother that was able to nurse him. And so then the daughter of Pharaoh adopted him, reared him as her own son, and gave him the training that a prince would receive. As they had faith in God in this challenge, God was able to then begin the work he wanted to do with Moses. And so he saved Moses' life and did a beautiful thing. So by faith they hid him. The second thing we see by faith that that this chapter in, in Hebrews tells us is found in verses 24 and 26, if you want to look there, it says, by faith, Moses chose to follow God. Let me read it to you. So by faith, Moses, there's that term again, it's throughout the chapter, by faith. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God, rather to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Here was the challenge that Moses had. He had two roads he could take. The first road was to follow the path that he was given and be Pharaoh's daughter and and associate himself with that as he became an adult or to do what he actually did. And by faith, it tells us he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And what he chose was to follow the people, the Hebrew people, and become more part of them. The great challenge then was the fleeting uh, pleasures of sin that were available to him rather than what he would go through associating with the Hebrews. See, from the world's point of view, Moses, born into Pharaoh's daughter's life, had everything that he could ever want. A bright future would be ahead of him. He had everything going for him. He could have benefited greatly by holding on to that identity as as Pharaoh's daughter, or Pharaoh's daughter's son, and, and using that to his advantage. But by faith, Moses, it tells us, when he became an adult, refused to go that direction, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses' act of faith was probably based on, on two big decisions here. First, it tells us in verse 25, he chose to be mistreated with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He chose righteousness 
over the pleasures of the fleeting pleasures, it tells us, of sin. Moses would have had unlimited access to those pleasures and everything that Egypt offered at that time. But he chose not to live in the present, not to live in the pleasures, but indeed he chose to identify with the Hebrews because he wanted not to live that way. He wanted to live a righteous way. And the second thing that we see is Moses then, it tells us in verse 26, take a look there. It says, Moses regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Verse 26. He identified himself with these despised people, these Hebrews, rather than to hold on to the treasures of Egypt. You know, when you think about the life that Jesus lived, you you go back up to the New Testament here and you see the way Jesus lived. The same decision was made by Christ. He associated himself, if you look through all the teachings in the Gospels, Jesus associated himself with the publicans and the sinners and the tax collectors and the people that the religious leaders really looked down upon. He did this, and he ended up being hated because of this by the Jewish religious people. But Jesus lived a righteous, perfect life. And in doing so, he refused, he refused to to hold on to those things that would give him the power in the world, he'd rather walk in the righteousness of who he was, our Savior and our Lord. And so there's Moses. Jesus did this later, but there's Moses, and he suffered the same kind of rejection because he decided, as it tells us in verse 26, he regarded that rejection as of greater value than the incredible stored treasures of Egypt. So what did Moses decide? He decided to permanently and fully look away from the temporal, uh, the, the temporal rewards that Egypt offered him. And he permanently and he totally focused his attention on eternity and his eternal reward. See, God's future eternal rewards for you and I. We see a great example in Moses. Those future eternal rewards are of so much greater value than anything this world could ever offer. And so by faith, Moses faced that challenge and put his trust in God. The third by faith we see is in verse 27. Take a look there. Tells us by faith, he left Egypt, Moses left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. This passage can be taken two ways. It talks about him leaving Egypt and not fearing the king's anger because he knew the invisible God and put his trust in him. This can either be one of two things, and there's people who aren't sure really what they're referring to with leaving Egypt. It's either that Moses left in that initial time where he left because after seeing one of the Egyptians abuse One of the Hebrews, of course, Moses went out and killed him, buried him. says he looked to the left and the right and didn't think anyone saw him. But then when it was found out, that's when Moses left and was gone for 40 years. But that's not what most scholars think about when they talk about him leaving out of this passage in Hebrews. More likely, it's referring to the role that Moses played later when he left Egypt with the nation of Israel in the great exodus. And that challenge is the challenge that he faced in taking them to to, uh, the promise, towards the promised land that God had for them. That challenge, that by faith leaving Egypt challenge, was the challenge to fulfill God's unique call in his life. And that's a challenge you and I face every time we think about what God wants to do in and through us in our lives. See, Moses' role was to lead Israel out of slavery. Moses' role was to do what God had called him to do. And by faith, he chose that in taking the nation out. And in doing so, he faced those challenges, the wrath of Pharaoh. Every time he would go and and share, let my people go, he would always have Pharaoh whose heart had been hardened and would resist him. But instead of shrinking away 
Moses looked to God and obeyed him and did what God told him. And it tells us, by faith he persevered through this. By faith, because he saw the invisible God, he heard God leading and guiding him. He put his trust in God, even though it wasn't easy. And it never is, is it, when we go forward to do the things that God has called us to do. That was the third by faith. He left Egypt with the nation of Israel. The fourth one, there's only two more to see. The fourth one, by faith it tells us Moses completely obeyed the Lord. He completely obeyed him, especially it talks about in verse 28, one specific thing. Let's hear what it says. Verse 28, by faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. The challenge here that led up to even this Passover moment was the word I used a moment ago, obedience. By faith, he obeyed. By faith, he kept the Passover. By faith, he did what God called him to do. See, when Moses returned after leaving for those 40 years and then having that burning bush that didn't be, wasn't consumed moment, and was willing to, to go and, and speak to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. When Moses returned to do that, he experienced great challenge every step of the way. God would tell him to do something and he would do it and he would be faced with adversity, but he obeyed. He kept doing what God called him to do. He had his own personal experience with God at the burning bush and that personal experience continued in his entire life. He, but he, the key is he obeyed God's directions. He obeyed the plan that God had in motion. And the truth was it wasn't easy, but it led to those 10 plagues that, that God kept telling Moses about. And Moses would go and tell Pharaoh, and Pharaoh would say, I'm not letting your people go. And then they would go through all those, those terrible plagues, one after the other, until that final plague. And that's what's being referred to here in, in Hebrews that final plague where the firstborn, not only of every person, but even the animals, the firstborn would die if you didn't let his, the people go. And, and of course, Pharaoh refused. And here's what God's word told, here's what God told Moses that each family was to do. This is a passage uh, right out of, of Exodus chapter 12. Each family was to sacrifice a lamb, then they were to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of each of their houses. And it continues to say that on that same night, the Lord told him, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn people and animals. I will be, bring judgment to all of the gods of Egypt, lowercase g in gods, for I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I struck, e strike Egypt. And that's where God gave those instructions. And by faith, Moses taught the people and they did this. And as he listened and obeyed, the reality was that the people who had the blood on the doors and the windows, that that angel that passed over would pass over them and they would not experience that death. By faith, Moses taught the people and they did this. And it was through that that finally, finally, Pharaoh said, take your people and go. The challenge, obey God's word, obey him Step by step, trust him in your obedience. Moses did that. Well, the final by faith we're going to look at today is verse 29, where by faith Moses then did lead the, the Israelites out of Egypt. For verse 29 tells us, by faith the people passed through the Red Sea on, as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. You know, I go back to that movie I talked about, you know, the Ten Commandments. And uh, when I finally did see it years later uh, as a little boy, 
I remember everyone was saying, you got to see the graphics when we get to the Red Sea. And of course, you look at them now compared to what can be done. But back then, it was a, a wow moment. But it was a wow moment for the nation of Israel when they saw by faith what God did to allow them to walk through on dry land. Because as you know, the rest of the story is they, they began to leave and then Pharaoh changed his mind and well, this, this group of a million people are, are leaving Egypt and they get to the Red Sea. In front of them is the Red Sea, which is impassable. Behind them is Pharaoh's army coming. He's changed his mind and he's had enough. He's gonna bring them back. And the Lord led Moses and said, look, trust me. And he stuck out the staff that God had given to him. The waters parted and the nation of Israel walked across on dry land. And when the, the uh, Egyptians finally got there, as we see in this, and they tried to get across, they were all drowned when the water came and fell upon them. All of this, it's so easy to look at now, but the truth of the matter, it was a huge challenge at that moment. Just think, there's Moses leading the people. They're grumbling now. We should go back to Egypt. But Moses, by faith, led the people trusted the Lord and they walked across. It wasn't easy. And having faith isn't easy. We walk through challenges in our lives all the time. Moses listened and obeyed the Lord and the result was that Moses is listed as one of the greats. Moses' life is a life of faith and he provides a great example of how genuine faith in God, especially during the difficult times, is so important. I want to finish with, with one final thought. And it comes out of John chapter 16, in which Jesus was talking to his disciples. And as he was talking with his disciples, they wanted to know more about what was about to happen. Listen to the words of John chapter 16, beginning with verse 32. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, said this, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me alone, Jesus said. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. He is telling his disciples, look, things are about to happen. Things are going to get difficult. You're going to face some challenges here. And in fact, you are going to be scattered and you are going to run. You're actually going to leave me alone. I'm going to be all by myself, but I'm not really by myself because, well, I have my Father with me. And then he says these words, and I think they're for us today as we think about the challenges that we face and wanting to live that we face, that we're wanting to live by faith for him. After telling them about this, that, that a time is coming, that they're going to be scattered and, and all this is going to happen, and we know what that's referring to, is the fact that when he gets arrested, they all ran. They left him alone. But Jesus says these words in verse 32, and I pray that they echo in your heart. I have told you these things, Jesus said, so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus tells us so clearly. He says, I tell you these things. In this world, there's going to be trouble. But in me, in me, you can have peace. I said it earlier. The walk of faith is not an easy walk. It's a walk in which we simply need to turn our eyes upon God. Turn our eyes upon Jesus. Put our faith and our confidence in him. Because he says, you will have troubles. We shouldn't be surprised when troubles come. But we should do what throughout the word of God we see the people of God did, that when trouble came, they turned their eyes on him. They inquired of the Lord. They put their trust in him. And then they walked step by step, faith by faith, putting all their confidence in the one who said, I have overcome 
the world. Troubles will come and troubles will go, but by faith in Christ, we will overcome. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the extremely, extremely powerful moments that if we were to read through all of Moses' life, that we see by faith you did powerful works in and through your servant Moses. Through the difficult times, through the challenging times, through the times that looked impossible. But he's our example today because he put his trust completely in you. And I pray for each one today as, as you're watching this, that, that whatever it is that you're walking through right now, I pray that you would know God's presence, his love, and his peace in the midst of any storm you may be facing. And that by faith, by faith in him, you will have the confidence to obey and to follow him and to be able to say, whether I'm walking through the valley or I'm on top of the hill, it's in you, O Lord, I put my trust. I pray that for each one and thank you for your wonderful promises throughout your word. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.